Hello there, friends and adventurers. Heather here from Heather's Hikes and Adventures. And today is going to be a short, sweet, kind of instructional style video tour of my kitchen and cooking setup in my no-build minivan camper. As many of you, I think, know, I have a Dodge Grand Caravan, a 2017, and I have two different floor plans that I utilize. In fact, I'm getting ready to switch up again soon for fall um, for my extended trip coming up. So if you have not seen my other floor plan yet, you'll want to stay tuned. But that's not what today's about. Today, we're going to be talking about all things kitchen, cooking, appliances I use, what kind of power setup I use to be able to cook, etc. Come along with me. I never remember to do this at the beginning of my videos, so while I'm thinking about it, if you like this type of content where you see kind of how people car camp, do van life, travel, um, you know, live on the road, how they set things up, what they use, what kind of gear they use, um, just basically how they do that type of thing. And also, if you like hiking and adventures around Florida and beyond, I am going to be going to multiple states in just, oh my gosh, like a month. I'm so excited. Anyways, don't get sidetracked, Heather. Like I was saying, if those types of things are up your alley, basically anything car camping, van life, and travel related, <laughs> you might want to consider subscribing, and I would so greatly love it if you did. But I am going to focus now. So today I'm basically going to be doing several things. I'm going to be giving you a, just a very general tour of where I keep everything. Nothing too detailed because I have done those types of tours before. In fact, I have one video where I show you every single thing I bring with me when I go car camping. So I will link that below if you want more info. But I'm just going to be showing you kind of an overview. I'm going to be showing you the few appliances that I personally use for cooking. I do not use any type of propane, butane, any kind of fuel like that. I don't have solar panels yet. Um, so I basically just power everything via electric using my power stations, either my Blue Eddy or my Jackery 1000. <clears throat> so I'm gonna show you all of that in a little more detail. I also use my Jackery 240 for some stuff, which I will briefly go over as well. And then I'm actually gonna insert a couple of clips of me making dinner last night and brunch this morning with a couple of different appliances that I use so that you can see firsthand how I cook both inside and outside of my van, off grid, wherever I am basically. Um, so yeah, let me get started. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is start with my main kitchen storage, which is gonna be this three drawer unit, specifically the first, <laughs> the first and the second ones. But let's talk about the outside first. So I keep my trash can for smellier items because this one is sealed and supposedly smell proof. So far, so good. And then I just put a bag inside. I have my compost oops there we go real life baby <laughs> i have my compostable wet wipes here that are clorox but these are they're free and clear ones that have no bleach ammonia anything like that it's supposed to be food pet and kid safe so i keep those in here paper towels and i just bungee those to the side so that i always have the cleaning side handy Underneath, I keep my large cutting board, which is my main surface space for making coffee, putting things down when I'm on the floor, things like that. I also use it as a cooktop surface, and I also will take it out to the picnic table with me. So it's kind of like my mobile countertop. And then these two, don't mind the leaf particles, I always wipe this down with one of my Clorox wipes before using. Um, I just have a couple of flexible cutting boards that I can use if I need to. Now let's step inside so that you can get a better look. This is my main power hub right here. I have my Blue Eddy, 
which is 718 watt hours total with an 800 watt inverter. So it does handle all of my appliances. That is my Jackery Explorer 1000. I believe it's a 1002 watt hour total with a 1000 watt inverter. So that also handles all of my appliances. However, that being said, I do mainly only use this to power my fridge now. Um, I obviously will make exceptions from time to time as needed, but for the most part, this is dedicated to my fridge. And I keep it plugged right here. This 12 volt power outlet will only work when the engine is running, so I don't have to worry about remembering to take it in and out when I turn the vehicle off. And that way, anytime the engine is running, it is charging my Jackery back up and it does do pass through charging so it can still continue charging the fridge as normal. In addition to my large cutting board, I also have this medium sized one back here that is the same thing, just smaller. And then I have this small one up here that I mainly use as a coaster for a couple of my cups, like my coffee mug and then my water bottle, things like that. And then speaking of water bottles, I always have this 32 ounce Nalgene, Nalgene, Nalgene bottle as my big water bottle. And then I have this, I believe is 24 ounce, 20 or 24 ounce that I carry around with me on my hikes and bring with me everywhere. More on that later. And then I also have my cup for regular drinks my coffee mug for coffee and or tea, my coffee setup, which I normally, when I'm driving, obviously, I will not have any of this out and about. It's all put in its proper place. Um, but we're not driving, we're at camp. That's why I'm showing you. So inside my actual coffee setup, look, I finally labeled it, isn't it so cute? Hi. Inside there is my AeroPress and Highly, highly recommend, as I have already done a million times before, if you want a good cup of coffee that is easy, fast, and quick to clean up as well, AeroPress is your gal. Anywho, that's what's in there along with my coffee and normally my milk frother, which I use almost exclusively when I make coffee for my creamer after I'm done because if you froth the creamer and then try to use the AeroPress, you will have a disaster. Don't ask me how I know, <laughs> but I know. So that kind of handles all of that. This is the kettle I primarily use for coffee because it's good for single serving, single use. However, if I am also gonna be boiling water for something else like breakfast or other cooking needs, I will use my larger collapsible kettle which I've talked about before as well. And I will link my video again, where I show everything that I bring with me in my kitchen setup so that, and my entire setup in general. But basically up here is my pantry stuff. I have a few plates, my spices, oils, uh, utensils, things like spatulas, you know, all of that type of stuff. I also have things like a couple meals worth of rice, chicken, tuna, mashed potatoes, things that don't take up a lot of space and last a long time and are non-perishable. Um, I know I mentioned spices, measuring cups, things like that. I know I'm forgetting something, but that's basically what's in there. And here is everything that doesn't fit up there. So my hot logic, my cords, a few extra bowls. That's my collapsible kettle, my stainless steel Stanley kettle that I can use over the fire, my griddle. So just more of my stuff like that. I was getting ready to discuss my breakfast tray here and then realized that my fork was still on it that I cleaned earlier, but might as well talk about that too. It's part of my utensil set. So there you go. <laughs> I just have this up here right now because I'm getting ready to load it up with food to make my next meal. But this is the main component back here that I wanted to talk about as well as a little bit over here. As you can see, this baby, oh, love you, is my fridge. My Alpacool C20. 
I think it's 22 liters, quarts, I, whatever it measures in. Yeah, I, I'll put it in the caption. I'm sorry. <laughs> A little peek inside so you can see what kind of stuff it holds. It is a mess, please disregard. We've got eggs, creamer, seltzer, a full half gallon of lemonade, some produce, there's some condiments, there's some chicken sausages, salad, um, some leftovers of the ravioli that I made, some soup. I'm sure I'm forgetting something else, but it holds a lot is my point. <laughs> so. Love that. Again, I use my Jackery 1000 Explorer and it, I showed you how I have that powered and charging in between. And then basically over here, whoops, I should put that back up front. I have my overflow stuff that won't fit in my regular pantry storage, which is mainly my electric griddle. And then I have some spare paper plates and microfiber cloths and my taco holder <laughs> and just some extra towels and cloths. So that's just kind of my overflow that I just set on top of the rest of my storage back here. I did mention my other water bottles, but this is my main water supply. It's my three gallon jug with my rechargeable USB sink pump so that I always have running water. I use that to cook, to fill my kettle, to refill my water bottles. Basically, I use this for everything except for when I use my water bottles. Last but certainly not least is my snack stash. <laughs> this is where I keep things like these buns that I've pulled out and um, just extra stuff like snacks, extra condiments, um, just some extra things like rice, tuna, things I might need for picnics, that type of stuff. Okay, so now that you've seen kind of a tour, for lack of a better word, of my kitchen setup, for lack of a better description. <laughs> um, I did want to go ahead and insert a couple of clips now showing, sorry, a mosquito got in earlier and it enacted vengeance, so now revenge will be mine. But I wanted to insert a couple of clips from this boondocking trip that I am currently on so that you can see how I cook when I don't have any kind of hookups whatsoever with the appliances and the power setup that I currently utilize. Granted, I am hoping, hoping to be able to add solar panels sometime next year. Ideally, I would love a 200 watt panel, a portable panel um, that's compatible with both my Jackery and my Blue Eddy. So I have been doing some research on that and trying to save up um, because I do think that that will obviously extend the amount of time that I can be off grid between trips, especially in the summer. I learned very quickly that once we hit those triple digits, the fridge does not turn off. It works great. Everything stays cold. My power system gets the job done, but it just depletes it way too much in the summer. So I would like to have that solar backup option when I'm not driving for long distances in between camping. But enough that, enough of that. <laughs> Let's take a look at how I cooked dinner last night and how I cooked brunch this morning using some of my kitchen setup that you just saw. All right, let's crank this baby up. I'm just gonna put it on low since it heats higher than I want it to normally. Got it plugged in over here. You can see this is supposed to be 150 watts, but it's really 375.
I am also going to be using a third one of my appliances for dinner tonight. So future Heather is going to go ahead and insert a clip here of how my Hot Logic Mini gets me dinner in the evenings as well. So here you go. All right, as you can see, I've got my Hot Logic Mini plugged into my Jackery 240. It is only pulling around 36 watts, so it is a very low wattage appliance, but because of that, it's also a very slow cooking appliance. With that said, I've got some soup cooking, gonna go for a hike, hang out around camp for a little while, and then in about two hours, I'll be ready to eat it. All right, my soup is all ready, hot and steamy, and I am enjoying it right now. All right, folks, there you have it. You have now seen my no-build cooking slash kitchen setup in my Dodge Grand Caravan minivan camper that I use for all of my on-grid, off-grid, stealth camping, um, overnight parking, what have you trips around and about on my explorations and adventures. So I hope that you found this video helpful useful, maybe you found a couple of tips that you might be able to utilize in your own adventures or other things. <laughs> I'm having a real difficult time with words today, apparently. I apologize. But I do want to thank you sincerely for watching. It means a lot to me, as do each and every one of you. And I will see you very soon on the next adventure. Bye for now.